Hiya. Salu. Anin. Atala, hi. On screen, our greetings are displayed in large blue, purple, green, and black text on a light gray background. In the center is a yellow circle with a white outer stroke, somewhat akin to a sun. Tonight's session is being recorded uh, both on YouTube and Facebook Live. Closed captions are available on both streams by choosing the CC option. Feel free to share any questions or comments you have at any time via chat on Facebook or YouTube. We'll try to address all the questions you may have by the end of this session. The language of tonight is in English. We will endeavor to make a version with closed captions in French shortly after the session. We're going to be starting in a few minutes. I would like to invite our Indigenous working lead, Gordon Brent Brochu Ingram, to give us a little welcoming evocation. Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome from uh, Chuan, uh, one of the Gulf Islands between Victoria and Vancouver. Uh, there are 14 First Nations involving three languages that have territories uh, that overlap on this island. And I'm very, uh, I grew up in uh, one of those communities. And uh, a lot of my family is actually rooted in Northern British Columbia. And I'm not quite an elder. Uh, I think I've still got about 10 years of uh, preparation for that. But I want, I was, I think a lot about ceremony and about moving from uh, one way of being to another. So I'd like to invite you. I have a, a smudge uh, going on on the West Coast. I'm sure some of you can smell it. Uh, smoke is coming off. There's a big tree behind me. I'd like you to think about where you came from, where your family came from, and how hard it's, how hard you worked to get to this point, to get to today, and just take about 30 seconds and connect to those folks, your life, and connect to how your interest, your desires to work in digital justice uh, are linked to all that. And just take about 20, 30 seconds, take some deep breaths, imagine that smudge smoke that's drifting into my face right now. Uh, and then we'll start. Thank you so much, Brent. Thank we'll you, have some, everyone. We'll have some silence for a few moments. All righty, I guess we're, we're ready to begin. Tonight, we're going to talk about the story of Together There and try to answer some key questions that might be on your minds about our call for visionaries. There are two deadlines for the call. For general audiences, the deadline is October 17th, so coming up soon or deaf, disabled communities, and anyone else that needs the gift of a little bit more time, there is a final deadline of October 24th, 2022. On screen is the title slide for this presentation. It includes the logo for Together There. The logo consists of a circle segmented into four sections. The sections have green, purple, 
blue and orange backgrounds. Each section has a single white icon inside of it. The icons resemble simple stick figures or markers on a map if they resemble anything at all. My name is Jessa Aguilo. I am the founder of Arts Pond, which is presenting together there. I'm also joined by our Indigenous and racialized team members for the Together There residency, including Danielle Hyde, Gordon Brent Brochu Ingram, MK Adajay Manu, and Shaina Agbayani. I would like to thank Canada Council for the Arts, Government of Canada, and City of Toronto who have generously funded our activities. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime at jessa at artspond.com or through the residency care team at residency at togetherthere.ca. On screen, there is a circle on the left side with my photograph inside it and another with the logo of Together There on the right. I'm a white transgender woman with a shaved head. In this image, I am wearing blue textured glasses with a black top. In the background, there is a visual graphic that resembles sound waves with circles placed in between that are of different sizes and colors, including yellow, purple, and blue. Before proceeding, it is essential I acknowledge that here at Arts Pond, we live, work, meet, and travel on the traditional territories of Indigenous peoples that have cared for this land now called Canada since time immemorial. I also want to recognize that this digital space that we're inhabiting this evening is one that is bound by colonial politics and systems that make up our physical and now virtual worlds. Our head office, where I'm located, is on Treaty 13, or Tikaranto, a part of the Dish with One Spoon territory, shared peacefully among Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, and allied nations who bound themselves to care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We are mindful of broken covenants and strive to make this right with the land and with each other. As arts and culture workers, we are participants in a sector that is actively erased, dehumanized, and displaced Indigenous peoples and stories across Canada. Part of working towards the complex concept of decolonization means being accountable to the relationships that we have with one another. This includes ensuring the work of Black Lives Matter decolonization and other social movements remain in deep relationship. We hope everyone participating tonight and later in the recordings recognizes the interconnected ways colonization has impacted our communities and that access and care is an access is an act of resistance. On the left side of this slide that holds our, holds our acknowledgement, there's an image with a blue curvy line moving from the top to the bottom. Sprinkled around this line are a dozen circles and squares in different colors, including green, purple, orange, blue, and gray. The agenda for tonight includes four elements. One, who are we? A grounding in the pond, as we affectionately call ourselves. Two, what are we doing? A summary of what we are planning at a very high level for the Together There residency. Three, how will you be cared for during the residency? Here we're, here we're going to hear more from our curatorial and working lead team for their personal stories. And finally, four, we will end with a Q&A period to help address questions you may have before applying to the residency. If there are not uh, that many questions on our live streams, then we'll continue to discuss as a team what our hopes and aspirations are for your journey if you are selected for the residency. So part one, who are we? Now in our ninth year, 
which is surprising to me as the founder. Arts Pond is a caregiver and a change maker of a different sort. Our mandate is to nurture healthy ecosystems in real, virtual, and natural life through the vital creativity and care of arts and culture. We do so by working closely with diverse groups across Canada to develop arts-led solutions to such complex issues as social inequality, economic precarity, gentrification, digital transformation, and disability justice. On screen is a graphic image with three flowing gray lines. Two of the lines move like water from the left to the right side, while the third, a fishing line, drops to the bottom after interacting with the other two. Each of the lines curl or twist in on themselves several times before moving on again. These twists are filled with different colors, including white, blue, green, orange, and purple. They evoke, perhaps, strings of colored lights or little underwater creatures glowing brightly. Part 2. What are we doing? Our first question is, what is the Together There residency? Using very plain language, Together There is a creative residency to explore the topic of digital justice in Canadian arts and culture. Put simply again, the topic of digital justice involves thinking about how technology, the internet, data, and other issues can be used to build a better future for everyone, including our Indigenous, Black, and other racialized people of colour. Participants in the residency will have opportunities to connect with other creative-minded folks from across Canada to think about digital justice. These include artists, curators, educators, managers, producers, entrepreneurs, thinkers, from all disciplines in arts and culture. At a very high level, there are three stages for the residency, including seeding, growing, and harvesting. Seeding is about trying to identify what your current state of mind is around digital topics and planting some seeds that help extend where you are in the present moment to new points of view and to grow those new points of view into deeper understanding and greater inspiration around how you might integrate digital justice topics, issues, and creative activities into your lifelong career. And finally, to harvest those inspirations and those ideas, both for your own individual practice and to share with our wider communities. Participants in the residency will be primarily asked to document and share their learning processes throughout the residency through a personal project, which you have the option to share as a part of an international hive on digital justice in arts and culture that will follow the residency in 2023. Your personal project may include one of three lenses. Art making, where you make or think about making art inspired by the topic of digital justice. Two, sense making where you think about ways to support artists and art making in response to the challenges and opportunities of digital justice in our own personal lives in our communities and system-wide across our country our communities and even our planet and three experimenting where you have the option to explore other creative or hybrid practices, such as a mixture of art making and sense making. Our second question is, who are we looking for? The most important thing I wanna stress is that you do not need to know a lot or really anything about digital justice before starting the residency. 
We are seeking participants that are ready and eager to learn and experiment with new ideas and new ways of working that eventually find a pathway to integrate the opportunities and challenges of digital into your practice. If you're feeling at all uncertain about the topic of digital justice, even two or three months into the residency, and what digital justice means to you, that is actually completely okay. For our residency, our key goal is to help you become more comfortable with this topic, this strange and really you know, inspiringly difficult topic of digital justice to become more comfortable and hopefully find a way that you might integrate it into your work uh, maybe three years hence, or maybe six months hence. Uh, but no, not you won't have all the answers, but find some inspiration and find some comfort that you don't have at the current present time uh, to be able to work with this uh, a little bit more deeply and profoundly in the future. Finally, we are seeking people who are able to work alone in collaboration with other participants and with the support of mentors and the residency care team. Other key information includes the residency timeline. The dates are November 7th, 2022 to February 24th, 2023. The time commitment is 80 hours uh, at minimum, an average of five hours per week. We are offering a $5,500 fee plus $1,000 more for supplies to help you document and share your work during and after the residency. If you need some adjustments to your compensation for whatever reason, this can be discussed with our care team to help uh, build a plan so that no current funding that you may have uh, is not no challenge in any kind of way. As I mentioned at the top, the deadline to apply for general communities is October 17th. Deaf, disabled, and anyone else that is looking for a, the gift of a little bit more time can apply until October 24th. Successful applicants, we will endeavor to notify you by October 31st, 2022, which is one week prior to the start of the residency. So not a lot of time. So we're asking uh, applicants to hopefully have this time slot of November 7th between 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern available for our first online meetup. There is a plan for timings of meetings in the call, but those may be adjusted if participants you know, can't make those times. But we're hoping that everyone can make November 7th at this time slot so we can start the residency uh, at the kind of the timeline that we have currently set out. As I suggested, other meetings are also all planned on Mondays, but we can adjust the schedule if we need to. I'd also like to stress that the focus of the residency is on learning new things rather than completing new work. Participants are not required to produce a completed work by the end of the residency. Rather, the focus is on the learning journey from start to finish. Participants will be supported to reflect on and document how their perspectives on digital justice grow, evolve, or change over time. We're also very, very interested in how you might document what helped or hindered you in finding those new perspectives or changing how you think while you are uh, journeying on your path through the residency. Different types of documentation might include journals, sketches, mind maps, blogs, papers, bibliographies, plans or proposals, uh, or frameworks such as like a curatorial framework for working on a topic. The residency, as I suggested, will be best suited to exploring new ideas rather than completing work on, already in progress. We say this because this topic of digital justice, we want to start with where you are at at the beginning of the residency and see how your 
your uh, preconceptions and how your your place in time around these topics evolves. And if you're already coming with a work in progress, then you have a framework in mind uh, for for that project. And we are very interested in starting new and seeing what comes from being at the edges, intentionally being at the edges of the unknown or the uncertainty of the unknown and seeing what can come out of playing with that with the support of all the other participants and our team. Some examples, so what might your personal project look like or entail? Three examples from an art making lens might include exploring the creation of a poem about the importance of digital rights as human rights for black people or indigenous people and other racialized folks and share it as a lo-fi paper-based animation. That might be what you strive to do. You may not actually complete it, but your, your project over the residency might be to look at, okay, what topics might go in the poem? How might I animate it and uh, see how far you get? But no, actually completing it is not, not important. And then there we've got the word complete, but no, look, uh, start and, and engage with a review of indigenous design video games and create some mock-ups for a new game about recovering territory and wide, wide stewardship might be another opportunity. Another example, explore artists of color who are making work about digital justice topics and propose a curatorial framework to share and support their work in the future. Three examples from a sense-making lens might include recent uh, review, recent initiatives, and develop a mind map on issues related to Indigenous data sovereignty and the role arts and culture can play to both harm and hinder and help move Indigenous data, data sovereignty movements forward. Review and make re recommendations to reduce the adverse impacts of algorithms of oppression and surveillance on racialized groups in arts and culture. Develop another mind map that points to gaps and opportunities for greater allyship between digital justice and other social justice movements in arts and culture, such as, a as, such as Indigenous reconciliation, land back, or Black Lives Matter. From an experimenting or hybrid point of view, some examples could include capturing a daily log of your frustrations and joys using digital technology and share a visual summary of how those frustrations and joys, uh, how your thoughts about them uh, evolved or changed over time. Develop a workshop where Indigenous and racialized youth and elders imagine what a just and caring digital future looks like seven generations from now. Or create a piece of writing with hyperlinks to honor the ways Indigenous, racialized, or other racial, or Indigenous Black or other racialized thinkers and artists build on each other's work through the digital world. So there's pretty much an endless array of possibilities for the residency and what your personal project might look like. And we invite you to take those ideas and there are many more uh, that we share on the website at togetherthere.ca uh, to see what you might come up with and propose for uh, your, own, uh, your own residency um, uh, possibilities. And we very much look forward to seeing what you have in mind. If you do not have a clear project idea for your personal uh, project for the residency, that's okay too. Uh, you can identify one uh, as you work with us and as we work, help and work with you uh, during the course of the residency. But if you have some, some theories or some provocations that are your starting point, that would be helpful. Part three, how will you be cared for? We'd like to recognize that care is communal. Care in, in the residency is both an individual commitment to ourselves and to the residents that we are collaborating and sharing our experiences with. 
it's communal also from our hosting team point of view in making sure that we take care of ourselves and we help take care of the of the entire cohort so ultimately we will be working with our residents to develop a list of community agreements in how we want to care for each other what we need individually what we are able to offer collectively and what we need as as a cohort as a community of residents to work together uh, in a trusting and, and safe and comfortable and respectful way also want to acknowledge that access is an open and ever evolving conversation and what you need to feel included and cared for is not going to be set in stone. It can change and evolve hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. And so we are very interested in what access and care looks like to you at any moment in time and to make sure with our care team and our working leads that that need that you have is uh, recognized and supported. The residency language is by default English, but we will be able to offer live ASL interpretation, closed uh, captionings with CART. And for those that are Francophone, uh, we can offer a limited amount of a translation of key documents and reports, not live, live interpretation, but translation of documentation. There's also uh, some limited capacity for LSQ for uh, French ASL. Uh, access doulas and support workers and other kinds of supports are also available for those who have different kinds of care needs. Ultimately, our wish is to support and share your journey and that you own anything that you create during that journey. We just want your permission to be able to share the highlights, the things that you are the most comfortable and ready to share publicly. We want to have permission to share that with our, with your communities and with ours. You can learn more about our team at togetherthere.ca slash people. And there are, the, as I mentioned earlier, residency at togetherthere.ca as well as care at togetherthere.ca uh, for our curatorial and care team uh, connections. The application process is pretty simple. Uh, you can apply in multiple formats, including written text with point form, completely acceptable. Uh, you can also use video. You can apply using ASL or LSQ. Uh, you can also, I didn't include audio, so you can submit audio files as well as, as video. Or if you are, are struggling to you know, communicate your, your dreams, you can also book a, a 30 or 60 minute discussion with a member of the residency or care team in lieu of submitting a formal application. So really just let us know what you need and we'll try to accommodate you. There is a, in the application form, a number of multiple choice general po profile questions, and then two required narrative questions that are 325 words or two and a half minutes approximately of video, including story, what is, why is now the right time for you to participate in the residency, and journey, how do you hope to be challenged or changed by participating in the residency? We also ask for support material, up to five minutes total of viewing time. And we ask for two types of support material, um, general support material that's about your artistic or creative practice in, in, this, in these industries. And then if you have anything that's about digital, digital topics to give us an example of where you're thinking. If you don't have any, if you've not done any kind of digital work previously, that's totally okay. Just provide another example of your work so we can get a sense of where you're coming from and where you might want to go uh, through the residency. I'd like to invite uh, members of our, of our Indigenous and racialized uh, residency curation and working lead care team to uh, share some of their perspectives about what care looks like to them 
and what they are hoping for as you know an, a desired experience for the residency so who would like to go first let's see danielle would you like to go first um, I was I was kind of hoping that Brent could sure. uh, speak sure. first. Of course, That's Brent. Okay Brent. Thank you. Brent is our our working lead from the Indigenous perspective. Uh, Brent. Hey, folks, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, um, I've just been painting outside. It's great. Nice. Hands are all wet. You, you've inspired me, Jessa, with all this good energy. So I had to get my crayons out. Uh, I've been working on, uh, as an Indigenous person, working on uh, uh, digital projects since I was really young. Uh, and I learned to write code. And I was part of a movement called the Aboriginal Mapper uh, Network, which um, was a really positive force in the 90s. Uh, and I guess what I can offer you folks is that there's a place, we're at a point in uh, digital technology where people can more easily play and dream and simulate. And all of these things are important uh, to envision uh, ways to build our communities. Uh, and so I guess I've gone from very serious code writing. I think the first code I wrote was like an early ATM program, you know, so the money would come out of the box. And now I'm uh, combining uh, multimedia on Métis Willow, Métis Cree Willow weaving and projecting it on ceilings. Uh, so there's a real tradition over the last 40 years uh, over the, uh, with the development of digital technologies in North America that uh, indigenous dreamers and of course uh, BIPOC uh, dreamers and futurists uh, have contributed a huge amount to the crazy digital world we, we live in. And I hope that some of you can use this residency as a way to kind of clear your heads, but also to expand your minds and think about dream of things that couldn't possibly have thought of before the residency. Uh, thanks, uh, everyone. Thanks so much, Brent. Uh, Danielle, would you like to say a few words? Sure, uh, Ani, uh, Danielle speaking. Um, so yeah, um, I'm an indigenous uh, artist and also persons with a living with a disability. So I have obsessive compulsive disorder and complex PTSD. And so working a lot, um, coming to those deeper interconnections is a big part of the work. Um, and so it kind of informs a little bit about where I'm coming from in, in terms of what I might be able to, to offer to the discussions, because it's just something really important that I want to see um, echoed and it's part of it, the way that we're coming here together and the ways that we really come to care because I think there's something important to this. Um, had to really sit long and hard because I don't do too much. I'm very much learning and getting more involved with digital work um, in in my practice and in, in the work that I, I create. Um, but I really want to share that I think there's so much more to the idea of digital and digital justice. Uh, like I said, I had to sit really long and hard on what I could share uh, and contribute to all this really great work that Arts Pond is doing and, and coming together and all the work that sort of come before. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I think that in, in taking this on, it's just, uh, for my perspective, I think we're all asking similar questions around what is digital justice. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it's totally not anything that I could prescribe or, or tell someone, um, but I know I just have like a sense that there's something that's needed. And I think that equally important to that, I think for digital justice on it for its part, it's so much more than what comes to mind. And I think that um, we all have so much more of an understanding, um, you know, just to start talking and that we have so much more connected to to 
you know, the idea of digital justice as a, as a cause and also what it calls to sort of support. And um, I just don't think that we mobilize with the blueprint. We don't have a clear idea necessarily, but we move to address a need and it's something that we see in ourselves, uh, in our relations, in our community. And I think that's where the, the care comes, comes in. Um, and I'm really looking forward to acknowledge all the ways that we're all interested in digital justice and coming together um, and just making sure that uh, we do that we that we're drawing on on all of our stories and live live knowledge uh, safely. And that is where that that care comes in. Um, I want to make I want to see my hope is that we are wholly we're able to wholly address digital justice um, by creating the, the good spaces we need to send our ideas to to grow and that we're taking care of each other in a good way um, in that. And that I think that many, uh, you know, are have, have, have known experiences of surveillance uh, and day-to-day -day unseen labor and, you know, generally feeling unsafe or lack of support and, and sort of many, many layers of, of prejudice in that. And, and I think that lived experience is critical, but we need to handle it with care. And, and I want to, uh, I want to echo that 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 is important, and that you know, I, for me, I re, it's really valuable that that you know we see that that through. Um, yeah, because it, it carries those lived experience. We all we all carry so much understanding of you know of what uh, we need that justice to strive for, even though it's not necessarily digital. So I don't think of it in terms of um, you know a binary of is this digital justice or not. For me, it's about community. It's about how we might bridge our stories to expand how our digital world might operate and operate in better relations with our physical, with the physical world and going between the two. And so as, as, like I said, as an indigenous artist, um, I often, uh, with the, with also with the disability, I do a lot of live performance in my exhibitions where I'm actually performing, um, OCD obsessive compulsive disorder live in a way that, uh, we can, I, I can have conversations with with people who are attending that exhibition. So it doesn't just animate the space, it's about expanding on that care and humanizing um, mental wellness. Um, and just having some brilliant conversations with many choreog indigenous choreographers with Red Sky um, and uh, uh, Tanya Linklater, um, who is an uh, uh, indigenous artist and uh, choreographer of Lutec uh, Descent. Uh, and taking care with how we express those stories and not forcing or, or dictating those um, on the body um, or on the mind as, as part of a routine. So is she, Tanya works with the, her dancers and she choreography, she designs choreography with them in sort of this, this collaboration. Uh, and I know that doesn't, that doesn't sound like, you know, it's not necessarily digital, but in the sense that, um, it calls on important things that we need to consider and involve when we're um, working together to develop what our ideas are of digital justice are, because it's this idea of, of stepping away from decolon decolonized uh, ways of telling our stories and working in that collaborative way where we are supporting and elevating all the voices. And that's sort of like a takeaway for me is, is taking this handling with care, that approach to care and I hope that we can provide the supportive spaces uh, with participants to take those exploratory journeys that that Jenna, that, sorry, that that um, Jessa offered and 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 spoke to earlier, and that we can all feel safe and, and embodied to share in the ways that we feel is needed. Um, really, really hoping to do that, and just to start that. Like I said, we have so much to start that conversation, and I'm and I'm hopeful that everyone who's here today or hears this. Um, and applies feels that um, this is that opportunity for them for them to do that because we are wholeheartedly here to um, to support that. And uh, I think I'll just end that thought there. Thanks so much, Danielle. Uh, if it wasn't clear, Danielle is our curator from the Indigenous Perspective with Residency. Uh, MK, would you like to say a few words as our racialized curator for the Residency? Sure. Um... <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is MK, and um, as Jessa mentioned, I am the uh, race, residency curator for the racialized uh, court. Um, so I am coming and speaking from um, Brampton, Ontario, 
uh, which is located in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Huron, Wendat, Haudenosaunee, um, Ojibwe, and the Mississaugas of the Credit people. So this is where um, I live and I work and um, do most of my things. And so I say that with deep acknowledgement and, and gratitude for um, the people who have come before me and the first people of, of this land. Um, I will talk a little bit about like what my process has been um, and just basically I yeah, share some thoughts I have um, about um, what digital justice means and digital justice has looked like um, um, making sense of what that means um, as it relates to um, maybe blackness or like the racialized experience. Um, so in our process um, and by our, I mean this team, um, of racialized curators and thinkers, um, we've acknowledged that barriers, um, we acknowledge the barriers that like black indigenous and other racialized artists may experience in accessing the arts, but also what digital justice means in these respective communities. Um, so in my journey into understanding digital, digital justice as it affects me, um, someone of like black experience, lived experience, I like to honor and think about the work of Black folks who, who, who are doing the work in, in knowledge and, and sense making on the topic of the internet, uh, digital realms, um, and technology. So some Black and racialized thinkers, artists, scholars I think of are uh, Legacy Russell, Khadija, um, and Bawe, and excuse me if I'm mispronouncing their last name, and Hiba Ali. So these are just a few folks who, um, who I personally see as digital artists um, and who are disrupting the ways that we think about um, that disrupting the ways we think about um, how we occupy digital spaces. And by we, I mean Black artists, Black people, racialized people, Indigenous folks, how we occupy digital spaces. And um, who these are also folks who I think are putting the topic of like digital justice into, into their personal and like creative practice. So this is definitely, they have definitely helped me um, come to sort of my own understandings, but also qu more questions about what digital justice means and what it looks like. Um, in my own life. And I think through that, I've been able to I better identify um, um, when I guess digital justice is happening. And so I've been asking more questions. I've been having more conversations. I've been, you know, ideating a lot more on, on what, what this, this intervention um, looks like in these lives. And so I'll speak a little bit about the practices of, of, of each of the thinkers um, that I've mentioned. Um, Legacy Russell, she is a uh, Black queer femme writer and curator who has coined the term glitch feminism. So uh, very briefly, her work explores the divide between the digital and real world and how we find out who we are um, in this digital era. So feel free to, um, you know, look through um, and sit with some of her work because it's, it's, it, it asks a lot of questions and, and that I find really helpful um, and really that, that resonates a lot for me as for, for me. Um, Hiba Ali is a digital media artist um, and also an, an assistant professor at the College of Design in the Art and Technology program at the University of Oregon. Um, Hiba teaches decolonial feminist and anti-racist frameworks and digital art uh, pedagogies. Um, and so I've been um, honored to have taken like a workshop with Hiba on like making digital portals and um, the way that they um, sort of incorporate technology into um, and, and speak about technology in a way that's grounded in decolonial and feminist and anti-racist frameworks is, is, is really cool. So um, that's also an, a person to check out. And then lastly, Khadija, um, Khadija's YouTube channel <laughs> is literally Khadija and uh, Um, I'm not too sure where I can place it, but if you search them up, you may be able to find. Um, but Khadija is also a content curator who creates 
online videos that often addresses issues related to blackness, gender, sexuality, and pop culture. And so really and truly, um, Khadija is just one of the many black content creators that I find are in, who are doing really great work um, and, and practicing the art of like what digital justice can look like um, when we, when the internet is used as a way to make knowledge more accessible. So um, that's my little bit. Um, I'm hoping that this can inspire folks to think about how digital justice is showing up in their own lives, um, whether it be harming or helping. Um, and yeah, I just look forward to what what like everybody else's, everybody's personal processes and journeys um, in regards to this really big and profound question. So. Um, Thanks That's so very much, thought. MK. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I think we, something we can do is uh, any of the, the people that we've been mentioning so far, we can add to the, the archival recording to the description of the event. Uh, so uh, just watch out for that. Uh, Shaina, would you like to say a few words as our working lead from our racialized perspective? Even just to say hello. Because you knew hello. you're a, you're our most recent team member. Hello, yeah. Hello. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just really appreciating everyone's reflections around digital justice and tending to care so far. Um, yeah, I feel there is so much that um, there's so many questions around what care looks like from a place. Um, in terms of digital justice and also justice more broadly of not necessarily um, uh, being reactionary to something or against something that's harming us. Well, I wanna acknowledge that those things exist, but I think a lot of the questions or the ways that I'm desiring to lean into questions of care with people is for sure to acknowledge those systems that exist that are harmful, but also to invite us to think about what care looks like um, as a way for us to become who we truly are <laughs> beyond the systems uh, that sometimes force us to think in the terms of the reactionary and the anti. Um, and so there's this beautiful, beautiful quote that I love and I'm going to share it with you. Um, it's it's um, by Albert Alejo. Uh, and it's in a book called Generating Energies in Mount Apo. And Mount Apo, Apo is a sacred mountain in what is known as the Philippines, in the southern Philippines. Um, and this book kind of goes into some of the culture surrounding um, supporting the, that mountain and being who it truly is. <laughs> and uh, this, uh, this quote is... Um, there, there are the inner resources of the people that cannot simply be reduced to resistance. This cultural energy is also power, but it is power not meant to dominate nor resist, but creatively for people to become themselves. Um, and I love this quote because I think it speaks to this part of us that is the original essence of who we are. And that's the person we're trying to actually remember when we're doing this work of care. It's sort of summoning our original selves, the, the, the most authentic version of ourselves that wants to be witnessed. Um, and that has been perhaps because of societal um, conditions suppressed and um, that we've been invited to you know, erase or to minimize or to sometimes completely forget. <laughs> um, and so a lot of this work of care for me in terms of the digital justice work is how can the digital um, tools and methodologies and frameworks that we engage, how can it support us to be in a place of remembering who we are and to care for that original source essence um, that is not shaped by the anti or the oppositionary but the who we truly are. <laughs> um, and so that's what I'll sort of like leave as, as a reflection for myself um, in terms of this conversation. And I just want to acknowledge how much I'm appreciating all of our conversation. Um, and thank you for, for all everyone's teachings. Thank you, everyone. Uh, what a beautiful team. I've been, it's been a real delight working with all of you the last couple months and, and China joining in the last month or so. Uh, so we do we don't have any ch uh, any questions on the live channels yet. Uh, one one question that may be in people's minds is so why do we have curators and a role called working leads? 
uh, I could address that question. Are there other questions that amongst our team here that uh, that are in your minds that you think we've maybe not addressed that we could talk about for the next five or 10 minutes before we wrap up? Uh, I could talk about the residency and curator and working lead roles in terms of care for the participants, but is there anything else you think we should address? Things on your mind? Open that up to other questions. Or questions from each other based on all the amazing uh, teachings and sharings that we've just uh, just gone through. Have any questions for each other? Otherwise, I'll happily uh, I'll happily jump into just talking a little bit about the the, the roles of the curator and the working lead, uh, and how that you know, resonates with the the care of the participants. Uh, so why don't I just dive into that a little bit? So we have a pretty large team. The hosting team is uh, there's four there's 14 staff in total, 14 positions. Uh, not all the positions are filled at the moment. Some will come in a little bit later. Uh, 14 for the entire project uh, that is together there. The together there project is a year and a bit long, uh, and there are two aspects: uh, a residency and what we're now calling the exchange or the hive. And so there's this residency that's four months, uh, and there is uh, curators that are helping us set a, set a framework, a container for what uh, the residency experience will look like. And then our working leads and our knowledge lead, who is not uh, joining us this evening, Asanya Khan, are helping uh, helping document and provide care to the participants as you go through and live and work with the container on your journey during the residency. Uh, and then the working leads and the knowledge lead uh, support the continuation kind of as a grandmother, making sure that all the wisdom and ideas and knowledge and, and lessons that come from the, the residency are shared with respect and care uh, to our communities after the residency as a part of the second stage of the of the project. And the second stage was originally going to be a symposium with international and national speakers talking about digital justice. But our learnings are are at the moment that we want to have something that's more like a a living a living hub or a living hive of information and inspiration and provocation. So after the residency, we're going to take some of the, with care, of course, uh, be inspired by some of the insights uh, that our residents come up with to create a framework for a hive, a skeleton uh, of ideas and, and provocations for topics to discuss internationally about digital justice in the arts and culture sector. And we will then curate and invite uh, speakers and thought thought uh, thought folks from all over the world to uh, write papers or offer up uh, inspiring workshop ideas or host a little uh, pre-recorded panel discussion or create a viral media um, kind of a, a, a like a a, a me a, a series of memes that uh, offer up questions for our communities to think about or have some uh, drop-in uh, group discussions in different cities across Canada. Uh, so we're going to publish kind of a hive of ideas and provocations and resources about digital justice that we want to continue to activate over the next several years. So we have curators as well, not just for the residency, but for this exchange slash hive, a whole team of five curators for that. And our working leads and our knowledge leads will continue uh, beyond the residency to help us deliver deliver the hive uh, in a way that's engaging and representative. And that will wind out wind out uh, the, the the final phase of this uh, stage of the project. And we're seeking funding longer term to commission complete not just ideas about digital justice, but completed artwork and completed white papers and completed plans and hosting uh, 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 various protests or workshops uh, to try to help educate and provocate our communities with the goal of building greater 
cross-movement solidarity is kind of the language we're using in the call for the residency. Basically building greater allyship and greater sharing and collaboration across our different uh, communities that are often working in isolation and not always aware of how the things that we are doing might be both helping and harming communities with different experiences and needs. Uh, and really, that's one of the provocations for the residency as well, is where are you at around digital? Are you in a place where you're only feeling harms about digital? Or where are the, where are the more positive sides about digital that are actually helping you? And can we amplify those helping opportunities while minimizing or mitigating the harms? Uh, and so that's one of the, the kind of the provocations for the for the residency itself is to figure out where you exist in the current present moment and where you might want to be five years from now. Uh, so that's kind of my answer to that question. We've got a three or four more minutes uh, team. Is there another question we'd like to just address uh, to wrap us up? Anyone? Just checking our live stream. We don't have any additional questions. Is there anything else, team, that you would like like us to talk about for a few, a few more minutes? Otherwise, I think we'll just wind up and say thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, so much for watching this, uh, joining us on this live stream or watching it and recording after. We are uh, really excited to uh, receive your applications and uh, hopefully uh, come together for the residency experience with you. So have a pleasant evening. Thanks for your time and attention and uh, see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jessa. Thank you. Miigwech. Thank you, everybody. Miigwech. Thank you. 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 Thank you.